Welcome to the video. You've made you've made it to Odette the Priest healing stream where all I do is just scuffed builds. That's all I look for. I try to I try to look through all the legendaries, all the talent options that are out there for all the various healers. Try to think about synergies between different things, maybe changing secondary stats, um, and coming up with just random builds that are probably bad, but I try to make them good. If that makes sense. So today I'm actually bringing you a Restoration Shaman build based on Jonat's natural whatever. I can't even remember what it's called. The Chain Heal Legendary, where every single target heal that you cast buffs your next Chain Heal up to 100%. Because I knew there would be some instant synergy with High Tides and then obviously like Unleash Life and Deluge. Um, so if you don't understand how those work, you can kind of hover over those those talents and your options and your talent tree there and see how those would all synergize but basically i was trying to make the biggest chain heal i could like how big can we get a chain heal to hit so with that in mind as well um i kind of so i practiced a bunch and kind of realized two things that the two and a half cast time two and a half second cast time on a chain heal is very hard to play with and play around so i i kind of realized early on that like haste becomes pretty important but also the, other, the big thing that i found was that when you're running this type of build you don't have a lot of maintenance healing going out uh so your health bars go very low and then just bounce up very high once you finish a cast so it's really bursty and since health bars were always kind of i find myself like kind of getting low my tank low and just people in my party low mastery became very very good I'm stacking mastery. I'm going all in on chain hill. We've got unleashed life. We've got deluge. We've got ancestral vigor. <clears throat> we've got um, high tides. Yeah, so we're all in on on chain hill. And also, cloud burst works very very well with this build because your heals are so bursty. So cl uh, cloud burst synergizes very well as as well. So with that, uh, I'm just bringing you. Okay, so now I'm a pug healer in mythic pluses as well and. My item level is 193. The shaman just hit level 60 like five days ago. I guess maybe like a week ago now. Um, but the time of this video was like five days ago. So I had like a few nights to get some gear. I'm at 193 item level in this key in this video right here. And we're in a 14 the other side. So I was with a pug group. We leveled a key up. We got to 14 the other side. And I wanted to show you this boss fight because I think it highlights the build very well. Um, so as we watch it, I'll just kind of point out some decisions and things that I'm making in my head, but important things to watch that I know that I, I need to be doing. I need to get high uptime on healing rain because that'll give me um, my deluge buff. And then I'm always looking to cast my chain heal on the lowest health target because I have lots of mastery. And when chain heal bounces, you get an individual crit and mastery recalculation. But if your first number uh like let's say if your first heal the first person you heal a chain heal that's kind of your base number and then it gets multiplied from there so i always try to cast it on my like lowest health target in my party but then it only has a very small bounce range as well i think it's like 12 yards 15 yards maybe i can't remember but what's terrible is if you cast like a like a, a five stack high tides chain heal on your range who's off in africa it won't bounce and even if they're not off in Africa, if they're more than if they're like 20 yards away, it's not going to bounce. So that's kind of always like be cognizant of who you're casting your chain heal on. So I try to position myself right in the middle of my melee and my range, kind of you know make that gap because the chain heal will bounce through me to get to my range. So that's kind of my positioning, and then also you know I'm keeping healing rain down. I'm trying to predict when damage is going to come so I can use cloud burst efficiently. And then last thing I want to say before we just get into this fight here is I took a huge break from this expansion. I haven't played since like January, and this is the first time I've been in the other side, and I, I didn't, couldn't remember anything. And you, you'll see why that's important here in a second. So let's just get into it. Mom's spaghetti. I just have a little bit of volume here in the background, but I'll just kind of show you. So we're in a hurry here. We have seven minutes to make this key timer. So we just want to pull it immediately. We timed everything so that I could lust. 
Um, so you'll see right here, I'll just, I'm looking to get my healing rain down as soon as damage starts. So that's all, I just want 100% uptime on healing rain, and then I kind of just give my tank some room and then me some room. Okay, right here I get the bomb, and I don't even realize it. Okay, all right. So right now we're at an oh shit moment. Um, I almost threw here, and uh, so kind of from here on out, I'm just trying to play catch up and not letting people die. Um, so what's good is healing surges with this build are worth casting because it's a really fast way to charge up your ch your next chain heal, right? So if you can squeeze in like individual single target healing in between your chain heals, your chain heals will just give you that much more gusto. And then I'm always watching for my high tides buff. You can't really see it here, but it, it just puts a little animation on your UI that lets you know that you have high tides. When I have high tides, my chain heal's not gonna, it'll bounce and not diminish. So I know those are gonna be my really big, those are gonna be important to, to get out and I don't wanna waste my high tides. So right off the beginning here, I need to shove Link and we're super low, but what's nice about this build is that's when it thrives. We're low, but we're all in Link. I know no one's gonna die here and I'm just gonna bomb out my chain heals. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. And they're pretty good, Robert. top everyone off here. Um, so I'm just, I squoze in a healing surge there. That guy didn't make it into a thing, so he dies, unfortunately. I think there's only four that come out, so someone has to not take one in the very beginning, I think. There's just none for him to go in. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, that was a that was a high tide chain hill. It was very, very big. And so with Lust and with the Prideful buff, we got this Tyrannical boss down pretty fast, honestly. This Boomkin's doing some work, but now we're slowing down, and so the boss fight is, you know, you can kind of feel it. I'm just trying to get us through mechanics here. There's like one, this part's kind of scary. So with this build, you don't have Ascendance. You know, if you have Ascendance here, it's, it's fine. It's not a wipe here, but I don't have Ascendance. And then I, I knew we had that mechanic where we go up in the air, so I popped my um, Spirit Walker's Grace so I could be casting in the air. So now I don't have a high tides, and I, and I honestly don't know how much mana I've spent here, so I'm trying to get a high tides. So I think I probably healing rain first and then cast a, my chain heals here. I only have a three stack of my buff. Let's see how let's see how big. Okay, I'm actually going for trying to buff it one more time. So this is with Cloud Burst. That guy almost dies. You can see how big that chain heal was. These chain heals are just huge, right? Like, I think this build has some interesting potential um, with, the, with the high tide chain heal. That, had, that, that one had a three stack of my legendary buff. Okay, I almost threw. And there, it just is a really nice consistent right. way oh, okay he stole that from me I literally had like yeah, I didn't, there was 500 health there or something i think this guy dies and i don't understand what he even dies to yeah okay. i don't even know he died, but there's some here's some big chain hills okay see that one was interesting let me let me replay that a little bit actually i cast it i think we did it i got the ball i want to see if this is a chain hill that one's a healing surge Mm, it was a healing surge, actually. <clears throat> okay. Well, 6K HPS at 193 item level. It was not a clean fight at all. But, you know, it's possible. I think there's something to this build. I'm not going to say it's, it's the new meta, but it's uh, not, not viable. Uh, uh, and it's really fun to play. It takes a little bit of skill on the Shaman, I would say, because... You're not relying on healing surges and like ascendance to keep your party alive. <laughs> uh, you're kind of relying on all the synergies of the build to keep your party alive. You need your healing rain down. You need to be using unleash life on pretty much on cooldown. You need to squeeze in single target heals when you can. I just use healing surges just because they're the fastest and then I can stack up my chain heals really well. And then I want to be casting my chain heal on the lowest party member but that party member can't be more than 15 yards away. So that you're always like paying attention to who you're casting it on. And then if that person's like too far away, I wanted to see if I cast it on the Druid there, but I, I don't think I did, but I do it occasionally. Like I'll cast on the range and they'll be too far away and it'll just hit the one target. And that's super bad. It's kind of a waste of the whole thing. Downsides. I see, honestly, it's not even mana. I don't have problems with mana. 
maybe um, these are kind of lowish keys. So maybe in like a really high key where the boss fights start taking like three, four minutes, it, maybe mana would become a problem. As for right now, mana is not, not an issue. I cast a lot of chain heals every fight and mana is not a problem. Um, the hard part is the two and a half second cast time because if you start a cast, you get like two seconds into it and then you have to move for a mechanic and restart your cast. Now you're getting into like five-ish seconds where you haven't done any healing. And that's a lot of time in a Mythic Plus. So Spirit Walker's Grace is huge. Um, i trying to remember the name of that talent on the tip of my tongue. The name of the talent that it takes a minute off Spirit Walker Grace cooldown I think is just absolutely necessary. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of anything else. So yeah, you don't have, really have big cooldowns. Spirit Link is your biggest cooldown, but it synergizes so well with the build that it becomes really, really, really strong, really good. I've had a lot of situations where, you know, I link, everyone's below 10%, and I just bomb two high tide chain heals, everyone's topped off. Um, yeah, and maybe Mastery will start to fall off a little bit for me as I get more item level and my heals, <laughs> my maintenance healing keeps people from getting so low. But right now, I'm like 75% Mastery, and it's just so good insane the chain heals do so much healing um i i wanted to say um the biggest chain heal i had in this dungeon was 26k so i had a 26k chain heal and then my biggest healing surge was only like 21k so that's a crit healing surge my crit chain heals are bigger than my healing surges and with high tides that 26k you know is gonna bounce three more times so good yeah i think it's there's something here it's wonky it's off meta if you're interested in those type of builds this could be something um yeah you'd want to try so, and, and also uploaded i uploaded the entire dungeon so you can watch the other boss fights as well this one was the <laughs> highlighted the build the most i'll say that because i literally almost threw it in the beginning but yeah thanks for watching and uh, i'll be i'll be coming up with other builds as well so continue to look out for more of my videos thank you